Here's lesson four of the trigonometry unit. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to use the three primary trig ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent, to solve for a missing angle in a right angle triangle. Let's start with part one of the lesson, where I'm going to review with you the three primary trig ratios and also introduce you the idea of inverse trig functions. So let's do a bit of a review first. Sine, cosine, and tangent are trig functions that take angles as an input and then give a ratio as an output. And maybe I should remind you what ratio each of these three trig functions outputs. So let me draw a little diagram for you of a right triangle. In this right triangle, the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. It's always the longest side. And then we could label the other two sides as opposite and adjacent. And it depends on where the reference angle is that will determine which side is opposite and what side is adjacent. If I put the reference angle, angle theta, in the bottom right, the opposite side is the one across the triangle from that reference angle. And the adjacent side is the side touching that reference angle, but not the hypotenuse, so that side. And sine, cosine, and tangent are just functions that take this reference angle as an input and then output a ratio of a pair of sides of this triangle. And there are three primary trig functions because there are three different pairs of sides we could make from these three sides of the triangle. The acronym SOKATOA can help you remember what ratio of sides corresponds to what primary trig function. Sine of a reference angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of a reference angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan of a reference angle equals opposite over adjacent. So after that quick little review of SOKATOA for you, let's go on to this next part of this lesson, where it says, for example, if you have a right triangle that has a reference angle of 30 degrees, you can get your calculator to tell you what the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse would be using a sine function, right? I can see from SOKATOA, sine of an angle equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse. If you use your calculator, I have a calculator screen right here for you. If you type sine of 30 on your calculator, making sure you're in degree mode, this calculator assumes that the input you give it is an angle and it outputs the ratio of sides. It outputs the ratio of opposite over hypotenuse if you use the sine function. And notice the calculator says that the ratio of sides is 0 0.5. Well, how does it know that's what the ratio of sides is? It has no idea what size triangle we have, but it knows that all right triangles with this reference angle of 30 are similar, so they'll all have that exact same ratio of sides because they're the same shape. Their ratio of sides will be proportional. And let me show you in GeoGebra what I mean by that. Notice I have a right angle triangle here with a reference angle of 30 degrees. It has the opposite adjacent and hypotenuse side lengths labeled, and it has the ratios being calculated over there on the left. Notice the sine ratio of that reference angle of 30 is 0 0.5. And if I make this triangle bigger or smaller without changing any of the angles of this triangle, notice that even though the side lengths are changing, those ratios are staying the same. The sine ratio is 0 0.5 for all of these, and your calculator is able to calculate that. But what we want to focus on in this section is what if we know the ratio of sides and want the angle? Well, that's actually what these inverse trig functions are for. This notation here where you see this little negative one that looks like an exponent but actually is not treated like an exponent, it just means the inverse of sine. Sometimes instead of that notation, that inverse sine function is called arc sine, but it just means it does the opposite operation of what the sine function does. It's not the reciprocal, it's the inverse. So what it does, since inverses do opposite operations, it says here that inverse sine, inverse cos, and inverse tan, what they do, instead of taking angles as an input and outputting a ratio, they do the opposite. They take a ratio as an input and they output an angle. So for example, if we knew the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse for some reference angle in a right triangle was a half, we could solve for the missing angle using the inverse sine function. Looking at this calculator screen, typing inverse sine of a half, your calculator knows that the input is now the ratio of sides. And what it outputs to you is the reference angle that has that ratio of sides. And because we're using the inverse sine function, it knows that this ratio is opposite over hypotenuse. 
and it knows that from a 30 degree reference angle in a right triangle, the ratio of opposite over hypotenuse is a half. So it outputs that angle of 30 degrees for you. And let me show you in GeoGebra again how this makes sense. Notice for all right triangles that have a reference angle of 30, the sine ratio is always a half. So by using the inverse sine function on your calculator and then inputting a half, you're giving your calculator the ratio and then asking for this reference angle that has that sine ratio. How is it able to know that that's the angle? Well, look, if I change the angle, all these other reference angles have different sine ratios. So between zero and 90 degrees, any reference angle that you could have in a right triangle, they all have different sine ratios. There's only one reference angle that has a sine ratio of 0 0.5, and your calculator is able to calculate that that reference angle would be 30 degrees. So now that you have that straight, the fact that the inverse sine cos and tan functions, you input a ratio and it gives you an angle, versus the normal primary trig function sine cos and tan where you input an angle and it gives you a ratio. Let's go ahead and see if we can do a couple questions where we're going to be able to solve for angles. Oh, and I put a note here. Just as a reminder, the negative one that looks like an exponent on these inverse trig functions, it's actually not an exponent. It's just a notation that means the inverse function. It's not the reciprocal function. Inverse means opposite. So that's why inverse sine takes the ratio as an input and outputs the angle versus normal sine takes the angle as an input and outputs the ratio. They do opposite operations. So now let's go ahead and do part two where we solve for missing angles. In example one, notice it says that sine theta is equal to 10 over 27. So it gives us, if I zoom in here, because this is a sine function, I know the ratio it gives me is the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. So I can find the reference angle that has a ratio of opposite over hypotenuse of 10 over 27 by using the inverse sine function. I know the angle would be equal to the inverse sine function of the ratio 10 over 27. And then on your calculator, making use of the inverse sine function, you can input the ratio of sides and it'll output the correct angle for you that has that ratio of sides. And your calculator would tell you that that angle is about 21 0.74 degrees. And now let's move on to part B, where this time we know that cosine of some unknown angle is 0 0.25. Well, there's only one angle in a right angle triangle that could have an adjacent over hypotenuse ratio of 0.25. And if we want to find that angle, we can find it by doing inverse cosine of the ratio 0 0.25, and it'll give us the angle that has that ratio. So on your calculator, using the inverse cos ratio, you would get the angle to be 75.52 degrees. And now that you're getting a general understanding of how we can use these inverse trig functions, inverse sine, inverse cos, by inputting a ratio of sides and outputting an angle, let's move on to some more complicated questions where based on what sides are given in the right angle triangle, we'll have to choose what primary trig ratio to use to help us find the missing angle. It says when using SOHCAHTOA to solve for an angle in a right triangle, choose carefully which inverse trig function you're going to use based on which side lengths are given. Label the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse from the desired angle to help you choose correctly. So in part A, it says for us to solve for angle theta. So I need this angle. From that angle, I should label my opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Well, the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. The opposite side is across from the reference angle, and the adjacent side is the side touching the reference angle but not the hypotenuse. If we're trying to solve for an angle, we need to use an inverse trig function. But which one? Let me actually quickly write SOHCAHTOA, the acronym, that might help us decide. Well, in this triangle, what two sides do we know? We know the opposite side and the hypotenuse. And if we look at SOHCAHTOA, which trig function involves opposite and hypotenuse? That's sine. So since we know opposite and hypotenuse, we can use the inverse sine function to help us solve for the angle. There's only one reference angle that could be in a right angle triangle that has this same sine ratio of eight over 17. So we can go ahead and calculate that. I'll start by writing that sine of the reference angle would equal opposite over hypotenuse, which is eight over 17. 
And then since I know the ratio, I can solve for the angle using the inverse sine function. So I know the angle will be equal to inverse sine of the ratio of sides, 8 over 17. And then using my calculator, I could get an approximate value for that angle. The angle would be about 28.07 degrees. And then moving on to part B, it asks us to solve for angle A. So when I label opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse, I'll do it from the reference angle A. The hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. The opposite side will be across from angle A. And the adjacent side is the side touching angle A. And then based on Sokotoa, because in the triangle I know the opposite side and adjacent side, I know I can use the tan ratio to help me figure out for the missing angle. I know that tan of the reference angle, so reference angle A, would be equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So tan of A would equal 8 over 5. And I can figure out what angle has this ratio of opposite over adjacent using the inverse tan function. And using a calculator, we could get an approximate answer for that angle A. It's about 57.99 degrees. And let's do two more quick examples here. Part C and Part D, both of those we're solving for angles again. Part C asks us to solve for angle C. So I'll highlight angle C, and then I'll make sure I label my hypotenuse across from the right angle. Opposite has to be across from my reference angle. And then adjacent is the side that's touching the reference angle. Based on Sokotoa, because in the triangle I know the adjacent and hypotenuse, I'll be able to use the inverse cosine function, right? Because cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse to help me solve for angle C. So I'll say that cosine of angle C is equal to the adjacent side, 4 divided by the hypotenuse, which is 11. And then if I'm looking for the angle and I know the ratio, I know the angle will be equal to inverse cosine of that ratio, 4 over 11. And using a calculator, I can get an approximate value for that of 68.68 degrees. And then the last part of this example, in part D, we need to solve for angle theta. So once again, I'll label my hypotenuse across from the right angle. Opposite is the side across from the reference angle. And then adjacent is touching the reference angle. Based on Sokotoa, because we know the opposite and hypotenuse, inverse sine is going to help me solve for the missing angle because sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of the reference angle would equal the opposite side, 3.8, divided by the hypotenuse, 5.9. And then when looking for the angle, and you know the ratio, we use the inverse sine function of the ratio, and then the calculator will output the angle that has that ratio of sides. And the calculator will say that that angle that has that opposite over hypotenuse ratio is 40.1 degrees. So hopefully now you have a good idea of how we can use the inverse trig functions to solve for angles. Let's do one last question here where we actually solve for an entire triangle, which means to calculate all of its unknown angles and side measures. Starting with example 3a, it says to solve for triangle ABC. I notice that we're missing two of the side lengths of that triangle, and also we're missing one of the angles. There are a couple different places we could start, but I think the easiest thing to do would be to solve for the one missing angle in this triangle. Since the sum of all the angles in a triangle is 180, I could calculate angle C by just doing 180 minus the two known angles. So subtract 30 and subtract 90. And that would tell me that angle C is equal to 60 degrees. So I can label my triangle angle C is 60 degrees. Next, I'll need to find one of the missing two sides. I think I'll solve for side BC first. In order to solve for it, I can use one of the three primary trig functions. I can use SOKOTOA. Let me just write out SOKOTOA so you remember. And then we have to figure out which one of these ratios will help us solve for that missing side. Well, the first thing we have to do is pick a reference angle. We can pick either the 30 degree angle or the 60 degree angle to be the reference angle. I think I'll pick the 30 degree angle to be the reference angle since that's the angle the question gave us. And then from that 30 degree reference angle, I can label my opposite across from the right triangle, adjacent, the side touching the reference angle but not the hypotenuse, 
and then the hypotenuse is of course across from the right angle. If I know the reference angle, and I know the adjacent side, and I want the opposite, the ratio that involves opposite and adjacent is tan. So I could state that tan of the reference angle 30 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is side BC, divided by the adjacent side, which is 20. So to isolate BC, I would just multiply the 20 to the other side. BC would equal 20 multiplied by tan of 30, which means side BC is about 11.55 units. And now the only missing piece of information is the length of the hypotenuse, side AC. There are a bunch of different ways we could find that. We could even just use Pythagorean theorem, which tells us the sum of the squares of the shorter two sides equals the square of the longest side. But I think we should practice our Sokotoa. So to solve for the hypotenuse, I know the adjacent and I also know the opposite. So we actually have a bunch of options for what ratios to use. Let's just say we know the adjacent and we want the hypotenuse and our reference angle is 30. The function that involves adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine. So I could say that cosine of 30 degrees equals the adjacent side 20 divided by the hypotenuse, which is side AC. And then to solve for side AC, I'd multiply it to the left and then the cos 30 would divide to the right. They'll just switch spots with each other. And using a calculator to evaluate that, you would get an approximate answer of about 23.09. And now the triangle is fully solved. Let's solve one last triangle to finish off this lesson. We need to solve this triangle and notice this time we're missing two angles and one of the sides. We could start by finding any three of those actually, but what I think I'll do, I think I'll start by solving for angle D. Making angle D my reference angle, let me label the hypotenuse, the side opposite from D, and the side adjacent to D. Based on Sokotoa, because I know the opposite and adjacent, I can use the tan ratio to help me solve for the missing angle. I could say that tan of angle D equals opposite 11.2 divided by the adjacent 14.3. And then when you know the ratio and want the angle, you use the inverse function. So angle D would equal inverse tan of that ratio. And using a calculator, you would get that to be approximately 38.07. How about now if I wanted angle F? Well, I know the sum of the angles in a triangle add to 180, so if I wanted angle F, I could just do 180 minus these two known angles. And that would tell me that angle F is about 51.93 degrees. And now the last thing to find is this side DF, which is the hypotenuse. Now, yes, we can use Sokotoa, but just for practice, let's actually solve using Pythagorean theorem, just so you don't forget that that's an option. If you know two of the three sides of a right triangle, using Pythagorean theorem, I know that the sum of the squares of the shorter two sides is equal to the square of the longest side, side DF. And instead of calling it side DF, often we name a side based on the lowercase letter of its opposite angle. Since angle E is here, the side opposite from it, we could label with lowercase e. So I'll change DF, I'll change it to E. And now to isolate E, I need to do the inverse of squaring, which is square rooting. So I know E would equal the square root of this sum of squares. And doing that, I would get an approximate length for E, which is about 18.16 units. And now that triangle is solved. To get good at solving for missing angles and right triangles, make sure to go to jensenmath.ca. You can get a copy of the free resources that go along with this lesson. Jensen Math.